Alright, we're going to talk about this. Hello everyone, welcome to the very first episode of TVR Asks. This is the brand new series where I ask you guys a question and I respond to your responses in this very video. The question this time being, who do you think is the most underrated Monster Cat artist? And then I put in parentheses, someone who regularly releases with the label on a consistent basis. And why? Uh, best responses are in this video, and we're going to look at those now. I think Hello World is one of the few artists that are e really blending the electronic and pop style really well right now. I've enjoyed his whole EP last year from the 8-bit crunch sounds and his inoffensive but pleasing singing voice. He just has that video game aesthetic that you'd think a lot of artists would do as well as him, if not better, but I don't really see that as of late. And a lot of these releases seem emotional, but there's also bits where he seems to really have fun, and I love him for that. I really hope he releases something on Monster Cat again in the future, but he's kind of chilling on Bitbird right now, but that's not a bad thing as the label's had an amazing 2023, and Call Me Up's a fire song. Honestly, I think I've said this from the very beginning since Hello World debuted on Monster Cat. His sound is so Bitbird, it's not even funny. Like, he sounds like Bitbird. He sounds like he grew up in Bitbird, like the the label, and decided to branch out into other ones. He absolutely deserves to be on that label. He fits that aesthetic perfectly, like kind of like what San Holo brought to Monster Cat back in the day. That's kind of what Hello World is doing, or what he did last year, you know? Does that make sense? Um, in terms of him being underrated, I don't... Mm, I mean, in the larger scale of EDM, probably I would say so. If we're just going off of his Monster Cat releases, the EP, and most recently his collab with Blank, um, then I would say he's pretty, pretty, pretty fairly rated at the moment. I think a couple of songs from his EP last year did get kind of snubbed from Best of 22. But other than that, I think he's perfectly rated where he is now. Dr. Ushu's few tracks on Monster Cat aren't really talked about much, especially with his more recent releases. Him making heavy music is probably the reason people are holding back on him. I specifically want to praise his sound design and it's very creative, and you'd never really hear the same sound twice in his music, which isn't really seen a lot more, especially with the heavier side of music. Dr. Ushu himself is has never been the most creative dubstep producer, even with his more recent stuff being a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion, than some of his older stuff. He does make some good music. His his most recent stuff, like I said, has been pretty pretty enjoyable. Uh, his Monster Cat singles specifically have been some of my favorites he's ever made. I wouldn't really go as far as to say overrated. I or underrated. It's it's very much a. I don't know. I don't I don't think he's underrated. I think he's perfectly rated where he's at now. An odd pick, but San Holo. He didn't release a ton on Monster and fairly quickly moved over to create Bitbird, but man, his few Monster Cat releases were some of his best within his whole discography. I couldn't really call him a Monster Cat artist anymore, but his Monster Cat stuff is hands down his best. San Holo is definitely an interesting pick, especially considering he's made two albums since then, both of which I think are better than his Monster Cat stuff, I would personally say. With that said, though, he does have some really like classic memorable songs on there the victory ep new sky and um they just haven't seen it not really my thing the jaws collab also used to be one of the most like iconic songs on monster cat for a while would i call him underrated based on his monster cat artists releases i don't think so i mean even back then his name was pretty pretty big in this EDM sphere. Sure, it wasn't as big as it is now, but in that time frame, if like 2015, 2016, um, he had some pretty, pretty big releases. I don't know, just, I don't, I don't, I don't really see him being underrated. I really don't. I haven't really been paying attention to how the community is reacting to new Monster Cat music, so maybe he isn't as underrated as I think he is, but I'd say Aether. I loved Aether a lot before he joined the label, so having him release consistently is super cool. I think some of his tracks, especially Sapphire, are about the closest we're getting to Inspected-type music on the label. 
I'm not really sure what that means, but okay. I love how textured his music is. He also brings some really sick neural basses to the tracks. Uh, a lot of the time, I think nobody else on the label, even Direct Cloud None, are really capturing the style Aether's making, which is why I think he's such a valuable artist for the label. If he stopped releasing, the label basically just wouldn't have his style of music at all anymore. Also unrelated, but the artwork for his recent releases are some of the craziest cover arts I've ever seen. Well, I mean, on that last comment, yeah, I agree. His uh, cover arts for the Moonstone EP are pretty great. Um, especially the EP cover itself, I think is beautiful. Back to the main question, though. Yeah, Aether, I think he... Aether, Aether has some pretty creative releases under his belt. I think he would get a lot more shine if he had more to do with the main Monster Cat label and not Silk, because most of his releases on Monster Cat are on Silk. I think, uh, yeah, I think, he, I think he might be a little bit underrated. I think I can... I think I can agree with you there. Do I think he's underrated to the point where it's like criminal? I don't think so. I think his style fits Silk pretty well. As it is now, I, I would say he's 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 a bit underrated, yeah. I guess I could agree to that. That word is entirely subjective, but if I had to give my own personal opinion, I would say that currently it's Have. He has some insane DMP, and I feel like he's sitting on the throne right now that Muzz isn't uploading much. And Faint is not like he used to. Have has been the main source for heavy and intense bass the past few years, just looked at Drift Away from August, or his great remix of Freight of the Dark from December. Well, um, I know you've been kind of uh, corrected on this in the comments, but yes, it is two people. Uh, Have is not underrated, I don't think. Um, they're support and love has been shown ever since they did that uh even since their debut with protostar back in 2019 you know that that song was released like at the back half of the year and i think it ended up being on best of 2020 have has always had a lot of love ever since they debuted up until they had that break in 2020 and then they came back with uh well, not break, but like break from Monster Cat. And then they came back on Monster Cat for the Kuro collab, which that was pretty good. They, they've they've had quite a few releases under the belt now. What I call them, what I call Have overrated, no. What I call them underrated, not really. I think they're fine the way they are. I think they're perfectly rated the way they are because they are getting the attention for each other. Even the most recent Fool collab. Like, I didn't love that one. A lot of other people did. A lot of people had that toward their favorites um, for that month, so. Whales. Thick sub bases and gritty but not overbearing sustains make him, in my opinion, the best Monster Cat artist? Really? The best? Wow. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> personally, I do not. I do not think he's anywhere near the best Monster Cat artists roster, if there were was one. However, I do think he has underrated songs, specifically one of his more recent ones, It's Not Love, came out er way earlier this year. Um, I like that one quite a bit, actually. Definitely an underrated one. Poisons is also pretty decent from 2021. I don't think he's, yeah, I wouldn't consider him one of the best Monster Cat artists. I just, I just, I couldn't. I couldn't mentally do it. <laughs> even if even if we were talking about everything from specifically last year, specifically this year, specifically 2021, I couldn't do it because there were much better acts those years. And even this year, there are some pretty damn good songs. I personally think the most underrated artist right now on Monster Cat is Conroe. Really. He has a ton of potential to be a celebrity or trending producer and vocalist since this man's genre is super radio friendly but still stays fresh and unique. It's a style of music that way more people would enjoy. I think he's super talented but hasn't quite made his worldwide breakthrough yet. Um I for Conroe it's it's a difficult one because he does have big songs. He does have music that does get a lot of attention. Um specifically if you're looking at songs like Therapy uh, Love Drunk had a lot of attention when it first came out. Um, 
Fighters gets played on the radio every now and then, I'll hear it. Even his remix of uh, Scared to be Lonely, originally by Martin Garrix and Dua Lipa. Like, he does get the attention. And personally, I have found his style to be a little bit sort of meh. I've never loved his style. I've never hated his style. As a matter of fact, in comparison to this question, I would even consider him a little overrated. Um given that a lot of his stuff doesn't really, I don't know, it just doesn't really connect with me the way that it does most people, I suppose. Most of the Monster Cat artists I've seen received fair amounts of love, and most are definitely appreciated well, but if I were to make a pick, I'd say Godlands. Her debut EP was great, her Drift Funk EP was a nice listen, uh, and her latest track is one of the better MC releases as of lately. Yet, I don't really see people talking about her as much as other mouse cut artists. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of agree. I, I, I think I agree with you there. I think her EP was massively underlooked, especially when it came to the Best of Comp. That EP got absolutely snubbed um, out of any attention from that comp. Even even her least, even my least favorite songs from her, like a Cashmere, I just, you know, I don't hate them. I enjoy aspects of them that are brought down by other aspects, but I still like things about her music and her production. So yeah, I think I agree with you. I think she does I think she does deserve a little bit more attention. Even though he only had one EP, Silent Child style was pretty nice, and definitely the best to come out of the more popular instinct debuts. Yeah, I agree. I think his Paranoid Optimist EP was pretty good. Um a lot of the tracks I did like some I felt were, um, some, uh, some kind of fell flat a little bit for me, but yeah, overall, I really liked that EP. I thought it was definitely one of the more enjoyable Instinct debuts of that year. Kind of surprised when he just kind of didn't release anything else on Monster Cat. Maybe we'll get more from him in the near future. Who knows? Um, but yeah, he's, I, I would say he's pretty underrated in terms of Monster Cat hemisphere. And finally, I'm going to have to say Protostar. I know he hasn't released on the label in like two years, but he has quite a few underrated bangers like Without You, Isolation, Feel Your Heart. I wouldn't say he's underrated. As a matter of fact, I'd say he's one of the more beloved family members um, of the label. And personally speaking, I haven't loved most of his work. And I'm only going to leave with the answer that he's not underrated. I would say he's perfectly rated or even, like, slightly overrated to a certain extent. It's it's pretty difficult to find people that do not like Protostar. Most, pretty, most, if not all, of his stuff has been pretty positively received, no matter what it is. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't really consider him an underrated artist by any measure, uh, in terms of, like, the Monster Cat sort of bubble. And that's gonna about do it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this first episode. Um, I This is a bit of a new experiment for me. I'm not used to talking on a video, so I'm sorry if I sound a little weird. Or if, like, you hear the, you know, squawkers in the background. Um, but, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to do more. Uh, but, yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.